Barry Ferrier. For Bangalore, what a fantastic day. Barry, good morning to you now officially. Good morning, Peter. Uh, so I think the first thing we should probably uh, put in place is, I think, the budget of the, the Qantas Parade, because I think that really sets the tone of how significant an investment it was by Qantas. Well, Expo was such a massive production and the Light Fantastic Parade was the centrepiece of the whole event and um, Qantas had the masthead advertising value of that and they, they also, they're a technology company in a sense, they, they were always uh, had the reputation of having the, the best safety record. That, so in a sense they were a technology company and so to attach themselves to this high-tech event was, you know, I, I guess a, a pretty good marketing move for them. And uh, they, the, uh, it was just on the verge of the computer revolution was about to happen in the early 90s and technology was starting to be recognised as the future of society. And so the Light Fantastic Parade was designed to inspire and give the sense of the excitement of the technology. And yeah, I, 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 from my memory, uh, the budget was $3 million uh, for, to, to mount the animatronic parades. There were 17 floats. Each were uh, a battery-operated uh, powered car with a little PA system in it, and on top they had this uh, automatic machines, that were animatronic, computer-driven uh, uh, art objects. And um, they, Mike Mullins, uh, he, he brought together a lot of different artists that had experience in that, you know, pretty uh, esoteric field at the time. And so there were a lot of different themes. There were um, some quite humorous Aussie themes. There were inspiring sort of beautiful unicorns, a whole range of... Um, quite stunning imagery and that it was some, all alive uh, and moving and, and, and some mundane ones as well or I clearly remember the pots and pans well that was quite funny really uh, um, this machine that did the washing up basically and uh, I remembered the soundtrack to that was kind of something we tussled with a bit how to make it not uh, sort of putting it down but to sort of build up the the computer side of it the music did a lot of that because um, they, they, you know, they were, um, it was early days of that sort of technology, but they were, uh, there were, um, the unicorn rose up and it had this beautiful uh, mystical look and then there was a, an echidna, it was quite cute and uh, different, just a whole lot of different, uh, there was one I thought, uh, cricket meets its match and it had a great big cricket playing cricket <laughs> and, and, and the batsman, was a cricket <laughs> and put with a, you know, pads on and, and a cricket bat. It was just bizarre, but... Uh, you, you certainly know. Mike Mullins had a, an incredible sense of humour and was really innovative, I thought, uh, in the way that he was able to bring such a unique spark to the whole of the Expo site. However, I think the takeout in relation to that is that uh, Three million dollars in 1988 dollars. I roughly did a calculation earlier. It's about 20 million dollars in today's term, and that's a significant yeah, sum of money. Yeah, it shows the commitment they it, made to the project. Um, now, moving on to your creative role, um, I think what we might do is just uh, cut off here and just review, and then we'll come back in the uh, second of this series. I roughly did a calculation earlier. It's about $20 million in today's terms, 